Stephen, I'm going to start with just watching that again for, I think, the third time. The scene where uh, David and his lovely wife are sitting there and she said, and she talks about, what, is she a vegetarian? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst discussing the person they've got hidden yeah. in the basement. That is a classic Moffatian moment, I believe. Is it? <laughs> yes. Well, a Was Moffatian, that... is that a picture of my home life? I think the, uh, the, uh, the best line in it is, we could get a Chinese. Yeah. Uh, and that was written by my wife. Oh, wow. Uh, so... my wife <laughs> Whose birthday it is. Whose hey! birthday Happy birthday! You can sing happy birthday. Look, I once hosted points. a Sherlock Q&A on my birthday and Sue organised for everyone to sing happy birthday. So, yeah. oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Sue. It wasn't arranged to be this way. It was obviously meant to be on Monday. Yes. But there yes. was another game in town. There was. Uh, so, yeah. Events <laughs> yeah. to go over. But um, let's go back to the beginning then, because I think this is your first show that isn't based as, to any, in any way on any existing IP or anything, any existing characters or books or anything for a long, long time. Maybe even since Coupling, I may be right. Yeah, you're probably right, yeah. yeah. So what was, the initial, what was the initial notion you wanted to explore in this completely was, original... Uh, the, the, there was, um, I mean, first of all, it's not necessarily easier to write things that are existing IPs. No, I know. Uh, oh, I'm not uh, saying writing that. other shows that were not allowed to mention is fucking hard, by mm. the way. <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, the I had three sort of notions in my head. One was, what? How would I negotiate my survival if I were locked in a basement? with a secret that no one wanted to know. I, I've always worried about that. I don't know why I think that's going to happen to me, <laughs> but I just think it might, and I want to be prepped for it. I've never worked out the, the idea way of saying it. The other one was, um, could I possibly ever kill someone? Now, and I, I sort of asked myself three questions. One, uh, would I kill another innocent person for money? And I, I'm confident I wouldn't. I'm very confident I would not do that. Uh, and I think just about everybody is. You wouldn't do it for gain. Would you, would you kill, uh, kill another innocent person to save your own life, kick him out of the lifeboat? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't admire myself for it. You know, I, I'd hope I'd be more heroic and, and wonderful and self-sacrificial, but, you know, self-sacrificial. But I, 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 I would at least aspire to not be that man. Would I kill another innocent person to protect my child? Yes. And that's the gaping hole on the side of morality, isn't it? Yes. There's a line later on that uh, Lindsay Marshall says, who's here as well, uh, plays Mary. Uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, 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 Dave's gone on about his Christian values. <laughs> and, uh, and she says, yeah, I saw very well, but Jesus didn't have kids, which I think is the problem. Yeah. I've, just, yeah. I've just ended 2,000 years of Christianity. It's been a success, but I figured out <laughs> what's right. wrong with it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You have. That's where it came from. I can imagine you possibly killing some journalists, but apart from that... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah, oh. right, true. <laughs> true. Um, the other, but the other extraordinary... Many, um, there are many extraordinary things about this series, but the two completely different, radically separate settings mm. that it's basically is. One is almost like... The, the domestic setting of the, of the small town vicar could almost be like a sitcom thing normally. And then you've got this extremely dramatic death row. You can't think of anything more mm. dramatic than a death row setting. Was that part, of, when did that occur to you to bring these two extraordinary different settings together? Well, I just like the idea in general, your life is like that. I'm always thinking about you phone somebody and they're in LA or they're in Norway or something, you're thinking, and that, and someone's overhearing that conversation and somebody's overhearing that, or looking at that person overhearing that conversation and a whole thing could happen. You could end up being a, a link in the chain of murder just by phoning somebody and causing some sort of misunderstanding somewhere else. So I, I kind of like that, 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 that sprawling quality that our lives have. So, yeah, it was, it was to have... And, you know, just the, the, you know, the fun of saying, OK, how's this going to join up? Maybe never. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Yeah. Paul, you've worked um, with Stephen many times on many shows, have, going yeah. back. Um, when <laughs> you read... Yeah, could we? <laughs> in a, yeah, in yeah a well movie. done on that. Um, what was... <laughs> When you read the script, and particularly with these two radically different settings, what did you think? Did you think that was going to be a challenge to kind of come up with a way of kind of bringing them together in the show? No, in, in a way, the fact they are so contrasting is, 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 an, is the interesting sort of dynamic in a visual world, you know. So 
we um, we wanted to move. I mean, the camera kind of becomes. I mean, I know it's strange because you only saw the first episode, so I'm sure you're all scratching your heads at points, going, "Where does this go?" And that's the whole point of it. I think that as we were filming it, I think we were also thinking about the sort of visual language of it and, and, and how the camera starts to become involved in this whole mystery as well. And so therefore that gave us a great opportunity to, to with, with Stanley's world, you know, Stanley's world is, is, is very calm and it's very, it's very d d deliberate in a sense. Every, every shot is, is set in a deliberate way, you know, and also I went very close to Stanley's face a lot which he wasn't very happy about. No, it's, it's kind of a beautiful face it is. And then with, 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 with David and the story there, and we kind of wanted to make that. It was interesting you said about sitcom. We kind of wanted it to feel very cozy and, and, and very polite, you know? And then eventually, as, as, as you're going to see episode two and three, the camera starts to get very active mm -hmm. and starts to move around the house and therefore builds that. And so it takes away that sitcom element to it. Mm -hmm sort of strips it away. And I think that's what's interesting about the, this, the, the show for me, was I was so intrigued by how the starting point and the end point, where those two things end. And I'm sure everybody watching it tonight will think, well, where does this go, you know? And, and that, for me, as a filmmaker, was really interesting, you know? Yeah, there are some really interesting transitions as the series goes on, from the basement to the... Yeah, we start to come more involved, and we start to... Because actually, what the, the great thing about it was, for the whole season was um, just watching these amazing actors just 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 play and and for me it was just setting up that world and and and, and looking and 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 it was about detail the whole thing's about detail and mm. and and as, as Stephen said it's, it comes down to the idea of of a moral tale about you know who what what would you do to save the person that you love the most or 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 vice versa and that that I think is is always. And also, I also liked, there's a, there's a f film called The Out of Towners, which is a Jack Lemmon movie. And I always remember watching that and thinking, why are you doing that? What the fuck is wrong with you? And then I think that's the whole idea. I want people to be screaming at the TV going, why did you make those choices? What, what were you thinking about? Because it's desperation. And, and that's always a great thing about this, this piece. You know? It was interesting, the gasps from the audience went certain. Decisions are made, particularly by you, David, and your character. <laughs> I mean, he's making a series of frankly outrageous decisions, isn't he? What did you feel when you, when you read the script? What did you think about the whole concept? And the uh, well, it's, it's, it's exactly as Paul was saying, that thing of going, oh, no, don't make that terrible decision, and then don't follow up with that terrible decision. And yet each step, you can kind of... It's plaus the, the plausibility is there. That's the, you, you, so you can see... And that's what's, I think, terrifying as a viewer. You can think, I can kind of see how I could end up down this terrible dead end alley, and then the further down it you get, and that, that, that there's a the sort of mounting asphyxiation that you feel as you uh, as you read it was very is you know was, was terribly appealing to be part of that story, of course. <laughs> well, you've you've been involved with Stephen scripts before, but this strikes me this like plat this really is delving deep into some dark areas, and yet in a, in a, it's the, the, the comedy is there, the humour is there, an extremely kind of darkly comic way. I, I suppose, yes, but I think that's life, isn't it? You know, I think at, at, our, at our darkest moments, we can, we can find things hilarious. I think that's, it makes it, it, it fizzes with reality when you can combine those two things, I think. And uh, Stanley, um, I think you've played, you, you played a serial killer once, didn't you? you? You got Oscar nominated for it, I think, a few years ago. Yes, and yes, yes. You've played some violent people, but this guy feels like one of the most likeable um, and kind of, kind of yeah. uh, charming killers I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of them out there. Um, yeah, yes. I, I mean, it's obviously one of the reasons I was so attracted to it, not only because, you know, it was, it was Stephen writing it and, and, and the cast, but the, the character was, he's a real dichotomy. Um, and the fact that he acknowledges what he's done and as he said, he, he, you know, he wants to do something that's of moral worth. So it's not this denial of, of, of his actions. He completely accepts it. Um, and it's bizarre. It was bizarre to, to read and exciting to read. So there was, there was no way I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> you worked with Paul before, haven't you, on Lucky Number Slevin? Yes, we did a movie a long time ago yeah. called uh, Lucky Number Slevin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that part of the attraction? And were you a fan of Stephen's work? Had you watched yes. his book? Yeah, it was de without question. 
Um, and so that whole package, when it came to me, I thought, oh my God, it's like the dream job. And it, and it was. And the result of it is beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unusual because watching it again, it struck me that the, the, most of the scenes are pretty long, like for TV drama. Yeah. They go on quite a long yeah, time. I like almost that too. Mm. Theatrical. Yeah, it's almost, it's, only, it's a theatrical in a yeah. lot of ways yeah. in, it, in its structure. Yeah. And I think that's. that's and we, we would shoot it that as well. Yeah. We yeah. shot it, we didn't. We didn't just do it sections. We cut. We we would every take would be the whole ten minute. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Over and over and over. Mm -hmm. again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for extra pay after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia, I mean, yeah. um, you know, there are characters who are killers and people who are hiding people in their basement. But you're a journalist. I am. I mean, it doesn't get worse than that, does it? How, how was that? <laughs> yeah. to get worse than that? <laughs> so what did you say? How was that to play? How was, how was it? It was play? fun, and I think it's, it was fun to kind of be the bridge between the two worlds and connect the two, because I think when you first start watching, you think, how on earth do these two connect? Because they just, they, they would never interact in, in the real world. So um, to be that, that bridge and tie it all together it was, was great. And yeah, just kind of Beth being, just having kind of having this judgment of, of grief and Stanley's character and trying not to play that, but so trying to make create a, a, an article that was non biased and judgmental when she has very strong opinions of her own and trying to withhold those, but grief seeing through it was really interesting and fun. And yeah, and I love doing the scenes kind of the, the 10 pages, just running it over and over was so fun because you just stayed in the moment and just, it, it ran like a play, which was, is, is always better. Yeah, I was going to ask, because many of your scenes are with Stanley, like you have mm. these kind of interesting interrogations, confrontations, and yeah. <laughs> how was that for you? It was so fun. I mean, it was, it was just great. Stanley's so great to work with, and yeah, it was, it was, um, it was really fun. And then being kind of in this, in the, in the um, death row set for two weeks and doing all those scenes very intensely and then going to, the train station and doing the tube scenes, it was really like, I just thought I was in a different show. So yeah, it was great. <laughs> I think one of the things about what the way Paul directs is that it, <clears throat> it, pushes, it pushes you as an actor. Again, it's more theatrical, right? Because you're doing a play and you're doing extended scenes, you're doing over and over again. But what it also does is it, it really forces you to listen. Mm -hmm. and, and the listening, is the thing when the actors are really listening to each other, that's what makes it super exciting. Mm -hmm. So to be able, it can sort of numb you at a certain point, you know, but then you go past it and you're really <coughs> listening and the whole thing becomes uh, another thing. And it's, it's, it's really wonderful in the end. Dolly, that um, opening scene, the train scene, is such a clever thing, isn't it, to introduce your character and to show her moral, a real moral depth to her. Yeah. What, when you when you read it, did you think that? Did you realise how key that was going to be until you then read I, the rest of it? I thought that's as close as I'm ever going to get to playing a cowboy walking into like a saloon. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is not a scene that I read that often and know that I'm going to be playing. So I was, yeah, I knew it was really important, and also, it was. I mean, I did, when we actually shot it, it was really exciting because you're, you know, you're all there and you're really feeling that there was like my, I was getting sort of goosebumps when they're saying mm. me too and I've got mm. it and I've got it, mm. and. Um, so there was something really exciting, but yeah, I knew I, it was scary because it was also that thing of introducing her. But actually, I've gotten too scared to say anything. I'm just not going to speak. But um, yes, it was yes. A, yes, it was a um, a really. I mean, reading it was really exciting, and then doing you like yeah, this is as close as one gets to being sort of really cool and brave and strong. But sort of you know, she's quite a sort of as she says, sort of homebody, sort of questionable dresser. Um, <laughs> question <would> you <laughs> what did you, you, you think should, about you should tell me about what your agent said when you <laughs> my manager <laughs> she's like oh you're going to spend a really long time in the cellar I mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah and about the glamour the glamour yeah, yeah. Mm. do you want to have your face covered in anyway but I mean, <laughs> you're like yes I do yeah I, like I get that. a kick out of that yeah. and the claustrophobia I mean you do you, are you okay well, with that well well who's here created a cellar that there was so much to look at it was so real feeling because I was quite nervous about spending lot of time in the cellar and also yeah I can't say that um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah I didn't I didn't feel like that I got quite fond of the cellar <laughs> yeah, but. And, and but you would have also Paul doing something really important, which is like just reminding you, just 
that, that you, we, it was really exciting that we could shoot these long scenes and that we could sort of create an atmosphere where we'd, ha we'd been practicing and then we were just going to, yeah, it was going to feel like a play and you'd be noticing every, it was really fantastic that you had that chance. But also, sometimes you might forget, okay, hang on, I landed on that side. So when I stand up, or just, just to be, have Paul just remind you of like, <laughs> this is awful, you haven't eaten, you haven't, you've been down here now for, because trying to, to also remember the sort of, you know, it's all so fast to sort of feel like, okay, this, I've now, this really has become my home. I'm used to, terrified of saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> you won't spoil it, it'll be fine. It'll be yeah. fine. Um, Stephen, now you, you, it, strikes me, it strikes me that we've, you've got these four main characters who are all fascinating and you're kind of, you know, manipulating them as they go along. Did you always have a, a kind of end point in mind? I mean, I'm lucky enough to have seen the whole thing and it is astonishing and surprising all the way through. But did you know where it was going? Did, did, I, I knew certain know? bits of where it was going. I knew uh, how it was going to resolve. But, uh, but the, what I wanted to do was just set all the characters running and see how badly wrong it could go. Mm. You know, not in a... You know, if you're doing a, I mean, a, a real proper farce, you have planned every detail of what goes wrong. And it is quite mechanistic, and you laugh because you're seeing a pattern emerge. But this, this is a bunch of people who are all desperate and just seeing things explode unexpectedly and things that have got nothing to do with the plot, literally colliding with elements of the show. I just, I, I, I wanted to sort of blow it up. Mm. You, know, it's a, you know, because it's a crisis and people don't make increasingly smart decisions <laughs> when they're afraid. You've never thought, have you? If I could just be a bit more emotional, then I'd be a bit more clever about this <laughs> puzzle. You don't ever think that, do you? No. Right. So uh, you, you realize it's just gonna get more and more uncontrolled. But you know, the big, the big elements, the big reveals and uh, resolves uh, were all there, mm. yeah. Mm. David, you described it in, in, I saw you describe what goes on as um, breathtaking awfulness um, that you have to deal with. And I think as it goes on, I mean, we haven't necessarily seen it yet, we get hints of it, but as the, as the series goes on, you, get, get, you kind of get reduced to a kind of gruellingly tough kind of, you really get put through the ringer is what I'm trying to say. What were those, what, some of the most kind of emotional and tough scenes, I guess, to shoot that I can think of that you've done? How, how were they, those moments for you? Well, I suppose it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very clever thing, isn't it? You've got someone whose life is being a sort of moral compass, who is, who's, who's professionally obliged to be good, and then you're making him do things which are, by any definition, terrible, and yet he's <laughs> trying to do them to stay good and to be better and to protect people, and so the two things are, are working in, in contrast to each other, and it's, it's a... It's a the, that, the character is between those two sort of grinding wheels, which is a it's, it's a very fun place to be as an actor. But it is quite grueling, especially as you know, <laughs> because we would do these long takes. You do these scenes again and again and again, and you'd have to sort of find and it, and it, like Stanley was saying, you kind of go through it. You 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 sort of oh, but it's a bit like this, and I don't. And then Paul would go like no again, again and again, and you sort of go through a process, and, and at the other end. <laughs> But it, but, it, but it sort of takes you somewhere that you didn't expect mm. to go, actually, mm. because the sort of more times you can have attacks, I mean, especially if it is going to some quite weird, mm. fucked up psychological corners. Mm. Uh, am I allowed to say that? Mm. No. You just have. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> it's uh, totally accurate. Yeah. I think that's, that's how you can kind of uncover the sort of sharp, interesting yeah. edges for something like that. Yeah. Paul, why did you put them through so many takes? Um, I know, I'm sorry about that. But because they're such brilliant actors, and I just love to watch them. <laughs> Quite frankly. Good um, with, with David especially, I think that oh. it was such a... Especially. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, um, Thanks for having yeah. me. <laughs> for David, I have another script I want you to write. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, with David, I think the, 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 the contrast that he had to go through in the, in the detail of, of trying to break him down was such a it was such an amazing masterclass I thought watching David and watching Stanley and watching everyone actually and we've got Louis up here who's amazing um, 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 and Louis Louis doesn't really uh, in, the, in episode one he, he's the son but you'll see in episode two and three and four especially I mean he, he's just incredible and. And to put actors through that, you know, you and and even though it, it was quite a lot of takes, but actually we were trying to do it in such a kind of way that we just went for it, you know, we just would go for it, and 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 it's not my job to push actors. My job is to 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 kind of let them 
enjoy what they're doing and, and, and everything is in front of them and then just let them just, just find things and, and, and give them the time to do that is important. So everything was set up and, you know, and, and, and Stephen's words are so important and, and I've, I've never really worked, I mean, I've worked with Stephen now a few times and, and it's incredible how the actors don't want to change anything. He won't let them change anything anyway, but, <laughs> but, but, but they don't want to do it because, and I'm speaking for you guys, but, you know, because there's a rhythm to it and there's a rhythm in the way I work as well. So it's a rhythm and it's all guided by, by Stephen's amazing words, you know. You're right, the Louis is particularly brilliant in the later Isn't episode. He, I, don't, I don't know where you found him, but he's, he's one to watch. He was recommended to me, genuinely, by Mike Flanagan. Oh, uh, he who, was, yes, he was yeah, in Midnight was, Mass, yeah. the brilliant Midnight Mass. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sure you must watch uh, on Netflix, Midnight Mass. Uh, it's fantastic, and Louis was in it. And, uh, and uh, Mike Flanagan sent me an email saying, he's brilliant, your son. Um, <laughs> and we were looking to cast a Ben, and... Uh, and uh, we thought, well, okay, Ben's a bit based on Louis. That conversation about the homework is real. <laughs> right. I had that conversation. <laughs> I wondered, yeah. Um, and uh, we just thought maybe we should try, but, but we made him audition. Yeah. Uh, and other people auditioned too, and, and we, uh, Sue and I, were not involved in the, uh, in the casting choice at all. We told Paul that he, we, would, we would forgive him, it's fine, go and choose one of these, that one's our son, but don't, <laughs> right? It's okay, whichever one. And uh, we didn't hear from, and we were very, we were fine. Louis was fine about it. He was saying, that's absolutely fine. I got no problem, I understand. Sue and I didn't sleep for three nights. Oh. Three nights worrying oh. about it, what we might have done to our family. Thankfully, thankfully, uh, he got the yeah. part. Was the line where he says, best Yes, that's was great. That was that written? written? Was, was what? that was in the script? Which line? I can't remember. Louis, was it? Really, most when you go festival. It's so good. It was ADR, but, oh. but is it scripted that you do that? Just say yeah, yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. It was so good. <laughs> I can't remember, but I just assumed I knew best. <laughs> but David, you are a very convincing father-son um, duo, isn't it? Yeah, do you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a little bit alarming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a baby. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> and Stanley, you have your, your neighbour, your, your cell neighbour, who is fantastic, um, played by Atkins Estimon. Mm. Yeah. What was, I mean, he seems a unique presence in the show. I think he's phenomenal. That guy's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. extraordinary. Uh, he's, so, I wish he he is, he's so funny. He's so smart. He is also probably like the sweetest person yeah. you'd ever, ever want to meet, which is usually the case with serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, no, what a lovely, lovely, lovely guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a great actor. I mean, that yeah. presence is... Is so powerful. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. That he's, he, he's almost the comic, the light relief, and yet he's a, yeah. a serial yeah, yeah. rapist. Yeah. yeah, yes, he's very relaxed about everything because he just kills people and doesn't fret. Right. <laughs> right. I yeah. mean, Harry gets all in a tizzy about killing some dumb maths teacher, and uh, and, and Jefferson Grief is, you know, all upset oh, he murdered yeah. his wife. I mean, really. Yeah. I didn't really mean any of that. If no. anyone from the Guardian yeah. is here. <laughs> uh, okay. That is what we call the Guardian. A joke. <laughs> right, but fine. Anyway, I'm fine. Let's not get that. started. Let's yeah, yeah, let's talk. Okay. Without giving anything away, um, David and Stanley, without giving anything away, did the two of you ever actually meet up on set? Or well, was there any? Uh, we can't really. I do that. Do, uh, 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 don't can't answer that question. Okay. No. It was it was very galling though to think. Oh, I, I I've been offered right. a show opposite Stanley Tucci. I know. Why are we not on <laughs> screen? <laughs> Yeah. I had to work with what's her name. You know, no, I was no, I was so no, it was wonderful, and I, but I was so sad because I'm a big admirer. Well, of yeah, his. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, David, oh, this is going to be great, and then, well, you'll see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it shows it. Is, is, is it weird to do a show, um, Lydia, where you kind of don't see the other half of the action in a way? Like watching it back here tonight, what was it like? Kind of seeing it the whole thing. Like when I saw it, I was. It was like seeing a show, like as a as an audience member, as a viewer, because I haven't. I wasn't part of any of it, so it was so. It's, it's just amazing. It's so entertaining. That I, I was thinking just watching it then. The scene between you two in when you're being pushed down the stairs. Mm. That was that like. 20 pages, how, how many? That was really <laughs> intense. It was four days. That, that, it was, yeah, it was about four days, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And we rehearsed the whole, it took about 
I mean, it, yeah, it was, I don't know how many pages was it, but it felt about It felt 20 like minutes. 20. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great to see. Yeah. But it, yes, Lydia, as you know, is sort of the one that goes between the two worlds. So yes. she would turn up on set and we'd go, what's it like over yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. What's Stanley like? Yeah. I'm like, he's yeah. really nice. We are yeah, best yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in reality, weren't the sets, like, actually very close together? Yeah. 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 Well, so well we have our, our well, who's right. a designer, he's so over here, he's yeah. amazing. Um, oh, yeah, right. our, well, our well designed Sherlock and, and Dracula with us, so mm. we're all a very close knit family. Mm. <laughs> and um, we started off, and the script is Sue, who's the producer, said to me, Well, it's just a cell and a couple of rooms and a kitchen. Mm. And I was like, and then ended up, we, we built the two biggest sets I've ever built in my life. It was unbelievable. So we built, we built the whole of the, um, the death row, of Stanley's part, and then we built a whole house, basically, in, in next door. And they sat next to each other. Yeah. So if you open the door uh, that we never open in the uh, Vicarage set, you could look out and see Jefferson's prison yeah. just there. It was quite but strange. the thing is, so Tony Slayer-Ling, who's also here, who's the yes. DP. Who's oh, the DP. And Tony, Tony, it was just extraordinary the way he let he let the death roll because I wanted it to be hot. I wanted to feel the heat, hence the fans yes. and all that stuff. And 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 that's that's a hard thing to do to keep that intensity and that light and the contrast between um, back in England, you know. And so Tony did an amazing job of that. It was the summer, and he had more lights than I've ever seen anyone have in that. <laughs> it, was, it was really hot, wasn't it? But it, it was amazing, and 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 to. You know, I always say it's the illusion, um, and I still think that you know, t t for these great artists, Arwell and Tony, just to bring that together was was, was incredible. Mm. You know, and thanks to Sue, our brilliant producer, for giving us the money to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we should mention as well the da David Arnold's music, which is oh, all of that, too. and the theme tune is sung by John Grant, who is an absolute genius. I mean, to have David Arnold is just kind of incredible. Um, He's David here. and I have worked. It's here. Yeah. yeah. David and I have worked a few times together. Ah. And you know, we, we, we came up with this. Um, we, we originally in, in, in the tent music was Johnny Cash singing mm. that song, which everyone knows that version of it. And then David, which who's brilliant at that, Dave just went, "Well, this is perfect. So why don't we do a version of that?" And then David had a great. Um, he had a great relationship with John, and and, and they went and cut the. Cut the track, it's incredible. Great yeah. God Almighty God, what got yeah. you down. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it really gets so into your head, yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to throw it over to you guys in a minute. Um, let me just uh, ask a couple more questions, though. Um, Dolly, your character goes through, I think, some gruelling as well. I'm going to use that word again, stuff, yes. throughout the whole thing. What was, the, was there one scene or one moment that kind of challenged you particularly? Um, there was... They haven't. I mean, it, it was all challenging, but they haven't come yet. The one I can remember, there are a couple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it was just it was just really challenging just to be somebody who seems one thing and then has to just keep having reserves of because she's so clever that even like the time when David first comes down the stairs and she appears, she like she's really upset. There's sort of levels of perform, you know, that she's working out how to sort of. I'm so frightened of saying it. Even, even <laughs> saying I'm in the cellar, I'm like, no, you have seen that I'm in the cellar. <laughs> I know you've seen that. Um, but there were some, I, I mean, I found the, I mean, just physically, the running having to hit my head, those sorts of runs I can find scary. Like, because you got to this pace, I mean, it was so exciting because we had really got it. That really did feel like a play. Like, okay, this is like a dance and this is, just feels really frightening. And the list, having had that time, it did feel exactly what Stanley and David talking about, that you're really just watching somebody, you're thinking, I can't believe this man is going to do this. And, and that, I mean, the bit when, oh my gosh, when David has to say about, I swear to God, I mean, that, I could feel each, you just felt like, oh my God, I just, I just want to stop you for a moment. But um, yeah, sometimes physically a bit grueling, but I the, the scene in my head hasn't come yet, so. But, um, <laughs> but lots of it was challenging, but in a really exciting way. Well, I mean, I suppose it's, it's, I mean, you have to consider the challenge, and I think about it, of being a woman 
when uh, you have to share the species with. You know, the other half of the species is bigger than you, more violent than you, and has an advanced and deranging carnal interest in you. Uh, that must be quite difficult at times. I mean, it would be, it would be so much fairer if we were smaller and weaker, wouldn't it? Um, so I, I, it does preoccupy me. It also preoccupies me how weak most men are in the face of that. Because uh, there's, there's another perspective on that train, which uh, the men here will be thinking about, which is the time you didn't step forward and do anything, the time you let it happen. You know, and it, would it be so difficult to stop that guy? That guy, by the way, is the nicest man in the world. <laughs> Seriously, that, that, that guy who plays that part, he is so sweet and so kind, I fear for him because he's so good in that role. He's lovely. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah I, do, I do think about that. How could you not think about that? Um, and so, and I've, I, I've been a coward on many occasions, <laughs> so I, uh, I suppose that's what preoccupies me, yeah. Yeah, and just that thing, that thing also the scene when, uh, when it goes wrong between Dolly and David and she's trying to get out and he's getting in her way and you realize, fucking hell. You know, that's just, that's not okay. That's not that, you know, we, we, you're the physically bigger, stronger, more violent one. That's not okay. What do you do about that? And it's, a, it's not, it's a, it's, a, it's a more frightening conundrum for women. It is also a conundrum for men because we've got, to, we've got to know that. We've got to know that we're the, you know, we have uh, uh, an advantage in that, in that one regard. It's, uh, we have to be respectful. So I do, I do worry about it and I do think about it. No. Have <laughs> <laughs> the desk. Yeah. You'll still get flexed with this, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. He's got a lovely voice. No, it was, it was all on the page. I didn't need to look at, I had done many, many years ago, I'd done a lot of research when I did the lovely bones. Um, and I did not want to do research again into murderers. Uh, and luckily I didn't have to because, well, he'd murdered only one person, thank God. But it, it was all there on the page. Everything I needed was there. He, he, did, he did the work. <laughs> I just said the lines. That's so not true. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you. you should hear me saying the lines. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you know what, what is contributed by this lot. <laughs> it's easier once the story goes on, gets underway, because you know why you're cutting from one to the other. You can motivate the cut. It was hell. Uh, for me and for uh, and for Paul and for the editor uh, to to work uh, on that the very beginning you're thinking right here's uh, you know we're on a train and now we're in the prison in America what the fuck is going on there and now we're in a vicarage you know you and you're sort of thinking what uh, it's really I mean the answer if you're answer, uh, technically I think is to have some sort of train of thought that runs through it. I mean, uh, we're, we're very inclined to be quite cutty in television and to have short scenes and to cut among them. Um, I've lost, I, I'm starting to lose faith that that's a good idea, only because the point at which people lose interest or might turn over or leave the room or do something more constructive with their lives is exactly the point at which you change scene. Because then you have to start again and think, oh, I was enjoying that bit, now we've got some new characters, who the hell are they? You know, it's, it's very tough at the beginning. And you put a lot of thought, but it's a train of thought thing. It's just simple, like uh, you know, uh, you got to have faith, and you cut to a church. It, you feel as though you haven't changed channel by accidentally moving your leg around the remote. You know, you think, no, that's intentional. So yeah, it's a, that's a very good question, and I could bore this whole crowd for hours on on how you handle uh, uh, going between plot strands like that. It's very very difficult. Good question. It is a good question. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna flex it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, narcissist. I, 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 I don't think there are many in this show, actually, of the, of the kind you describe. I don't think. I mean, I think the, the tragedy is they're not psychopaths. Uh, you know, Harry's not a psychopath. He's trying to do the right thing, and he's doing it badly. He's doing it wrongly. But the, the most interesting question you could ever ask in the whole world is why do good people do bad things? We know why bad people do bad things. It's a boring question, right? Why do you invade Ukraine? Because you're it, right? I mean, that's, uh, but uh, why do, more, more pressing, a bit partly because there are more good people than there are bad people, there really are, why do good people 
do bad things. So I actually, I, I think I, I, on this occasion, I'm not writing about any uh, pretend psychopaths that may or may not have been in any other shows that we're not allowed to mention unless Stanley Tucci is making a meal in it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, I shall now hand on to everybody else. <laughs> but, yeah, cause, but it is true, isn't it? The whole idea is that all of us are capable of, of murder mm. in, in, yeah. in the... In the yeah. <laughs> Just underline. Well, uh, it's, good, it's good that we had a big discussion yeah. about capacity for murder then. Exactly. It's right to the heart. Uh, are you asking I, if I have uh, uh, trouble working with family members in our family firm? Not no. very much. <laughs> no. uh, it's, it's far worse than that. I didn't, I mean, I had total faith. But I think I had a recommendation from the brilliant Mike Flanagan. Seriously, I took that seriously. I did actually think, well, okay, he, he actually does. I wouldn't have liked it, and, I, and Louis wouldn't have liked it either, for it to have been Louis's first job. It was his second job, and he'd done a brilliant job the first time, so that was really important. Uh, and other than that, I, I mean, I know the man, and I know he works hard, and I know he, th I, I know he does, he's industrious and he's smart, and I knew, I, abs absolute confidence he'd knock that down. Uh, that, that didn't bother me at all. On the other hand, David Tennant, uh, <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. unreliable. <laughs> Were you delighted to return to the southern accent, David? Huh? Were you delighted to return to the southern accent? Uh, well, they were... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't really think about it. I mean, it, we, we did have the discussion about it. Yeah, we it, did, yeah. But, uh, but yes, then he would be, why is, a, why is he not a Church of Scotland minister? Yeah. And it was, there was just too many... It, it asked questions that were unhelpful. Yeah, yeah. So mm. that's the, it, that was really why the decision was made. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. It wouldn't be haggis. Um, no offense. Uh, but I... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've never had haggis. Haggis uh, and I, pasta, then. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. I actually get asked that question so often. Uh, and it's very hard. I could go on forever about it, and I would bore you. I would really bore you. Um, but I will say that it would include oysters and a martini. Mm. <laughs> Both. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's always interesting to have a character that explores parts of life that you don't explore in your own life. It's a sort of exorcism in a way, isn't it? Yeah. You, get to, you get to see what it might be like to walk in those shoes, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it is a... It is a I remember, well, I mean, <clears throat> in just thinking about this, doing this, where I'm a sort of a step removed from the act, so we don't know the act. We don't. We get told about the act mm -hmm. later, in, in 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 a sense, but but so there's a remove, and that helps. Having done other things where it's it's actually active, it's it's much harder with the lovely bones, I, I had great difficulty doing that. I didn't want to do it at first, and then doing it, I, f I found it very, very hard. And it was, it was only Sarah Ronan, who was 12 or 13 at the time. I kept saying to her during this one scene, um, you know, I'm, are you okay after every take? And she'd say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I'd say, are you okay after the next? And I did it like three, four times, and she said, Stanley. I'm okay, but are you okay? Because <laughs> I, so, I was so nervous about it. It was so, uh -huh. it's, you know, as a, as certainly as a, as a parent, but even just as a person, nothing could be worse than um, somebody harming a child. So, yeah. But it does allow you to explore, like you say, the, the darker parts of ourselves um, that hopefully we'll never experience in real life, yeah. <laughs> The character who doesn't sort of, I mean, in a strange way, who articulates most of that really is Mary, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, when yeah. she, she's talking about what it actually takes to do a murder. There's a, we, we get into that, you know, because it's not that easy to kill people, trust me. Um, you know, it's, uh, and so uh, Lindsay as Mary does a lot of the, 
the actual yeah. practicalities. There's a rather uh, a rather terrific scene, I think, in episode two, where she uh, where, where Lindsay breaks down. Well, what? How? How do you stop them being alive exactly? You don't. You can't just shoot them with a ray gun, which you can do in other shows. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wrote down this line actually. Yeah, Mary says at one point, "How does anyone get murdered? There's so much admin." <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I think it all starts with kind of just the scripts. And when I received this, I, uh, you, 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 you're, I guess, like ge general scheduling, you kind of work. So I, you don't really do two things at once. And I wasn't in this case. And um, I just, I, I read the scripts and then it all really starts in the read through. So with in our read through, I, I didn't really like absorb everything when I was reading it by myself and then when I heard it uh, like us all doing it I kind of then understood what mm. the whole story was and I, I missed so much I, I was so many things that I missed in, in reading it sorry Stephen mm. <laughs> you should read the bits you're not in That's not <laughs> exactly I'm like in this scene <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I guess I guess yeah it's just you just have to kind of switch off from one role and go into another and it's, it helps when you're working with amazing people and amazing writing and yeah, this is like a family. Like they're coming. This was like coming home for me because we'd all worked together, most of us before, and and um, that's what Sue and Stephen create these beautiful, welcoming sets for the cast and the crew. So yeah, it. it I hope that answered your question. I practiced m massively with my mother. I remember when we were doing Dracula, she would say <laughs> things like, God, this is a really wonderful part. I hope you do it well. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be thinking, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And then the same with this one again, like, oh, it's giving you another chump. I hope, yeah, just, don't, <laughs> just, keep, another chump. just keep saying it. I don't need you to say anything else. Just keep saying it with me. But, um, so yeah, I didn't know if that wasn't allowed. I never asked, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, officially. Any others? It I'm just happy you learned them. That's good. That's good. It How long did it take you, Stanley, to learn your to learn? Mine? Yeah. It, it took. A oh, long you had a lot. Yeah, you had a lot. Yeah. Stanley, Stanley had a lot in such a short period mm, of time. Yeah, because my stuff we shot in like two weeks or something, mm. two and a half weeks or something, and um, I it learned it. I basically I ran it with my some family members. Uh, when they could, you know, and after a while they go, oh, God, all right, all right. <laughs> Not because of your script, but because of my lack of memory. Um, but then uh, you, you guys were kind enough to hire someone to help me go through it. So I would rehearse it like a play with a guy, but this was also, the fellow was someplace else. So we did it always. I actually never met him in person. We only did it via Zoom. And, but I had to do it every day. And I would take the first, episode and then sort of get that and then creep into the second and then eventually at the end we would just run through all four episodes um, and it, I had to rehearse it like a play but what was really interesting is that it's not a physical piece often when you're rehearsing something um, the the words will come to you and they get connected into the, your movement I wasn't re moving with the exception of standing up in the cell otherwise I was just seated which in a strange way makes it even harder. Mm. Um, but I was very grateful that you were kind enough to have somebody for me, because also, I'm, you know, fucking old. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know who these people were tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>